Hello and welcome to Globe Watch with me, Charles Abune Ed from the Hilton Hotel here in Yaoundé. It is a history of 103 years, employing at least 170,000 people globally present in at least 122 countries and territories with a hotel room capacity of 1.1 million rooms. I'm talking about the Hilton Group, which is one of the largest multinationals when it comes to the travel and hospitality business worldwide. How is the group faring, especially in the Middle East, Turkey, and Africa in the COVID and post-COVID era? My guest today on Globe Watch is the president of the Hilton Group for Turkey, the Middle East, and Africa. Joachim Young Slifer, welcome to Globe Watch. Thank you very much. Really happy to be here. You heard a brief summary of the Hilton Group, 103 years old. How is the group doing today worldwide? Well, the group is doing extremely well. Um, as you can imagine, the crisis during COVID was severe for us. We have never seen such a crisis before in hospitality. But we've come out even stronger, I would say. So we celebrated our 100th anniversary in uh, 2019, like you correctly said, and uh, we were ready, we're heading, a, we're heading a fantastic year in 2019, then we had the crisis, but we've come out stronger. So we keep on developing hotels, we have a huge pipeline of hotels. So to give you an idea, in Africa we're currently operating 44 hotels, we have another 66 in the pipeline, so we're going to more than double our number of hotels on the African continent. So in general, business has been difficult. We saw leisure business picking up quite quickly again after the crisis. Uh, and we see now corporate travel starting to pick up again. And I think something very specific for Africa is that um, there's a lot of intra-regional travel, I would say. Uh, Africa was less dependent on international travel, I would say, like uh, maybe other parts of my region, when the Middle East is much dependent on international travel. African travel continued within the continent. So business is pretty good. Well, you just said that business is pretty good because, as you know, roughly 2 billion people travel every year. At least millions of them spend nights in hotels, including the heating group where you are present in, 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 in most African countries. So what is the overall performance of the travel and tourism industry currently looking on the continent and for Central Africa in particular? Right, travel has been, uh, like I just said before, actually travel has been um, difficult during the crisis, but now we're actually having good occupancies again, I have to say. Um, people are confident again to travel, and I think people has, have discovered, um, because they couldn't travel, how much they actually like it. And so we see people now making actually the travel of a lifetime. People going to do things they've always wanted to do, and they sort of waited for doing it. So we can see, for instance, a lot of people going on, on uh, safaris, but extended families. So not just a couple, but they will take the kids and the grandparents. And so we see a lot of family travel currently um, because people want to start traveling again and have an experience. And so I think the African continent, for instance, is, is perfect for that. How unique is uh, the Hilton Group's operations in areas like Africa, like the Middle East and Turkey, where you operate, what makes it unique from other areas that the Hilton Group operates? Well, I think, you know, if I look at my specific area, and you just quoted it, um, what I really, uh, what I like, and I know what our travelers like, is the variety of cultures. We have a big variety of cultures. There's not one country the same, I would say. Um, and so, you know, I very much enjoy when I travel around the region, seeing different hotels. Um, I enjoy seeing our team members doing an excellent job taking care of our customers. So I think, you know, the, 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 the things that really stand out for each of those countries make, make each hotel actually un uh, unique for our travelers to actually go to. You heard me say that you have a hotel room capacity of plus 98,000 globally, and you have been pioneering travel and tourism industry in Africa. Tell us about Hilton presence in Africa and how at the operating and pipeline hotels contributing to the socioeconomic development of the continent, especially in the post-COVID era. 
Yes, it's, it's actually we've seen actually during the um, during the COVID era actually our growth going even faster because we saw a lot of independent hotels who thought it was a good idea to sign up with a big operator like Hilton because they can distribute their rooms to a bigger uh, bi bigger customer base. So we have currently 44 hotels operating and we have a pipeline of another 66 and we're working on a number of other hotels as well. And so if you look at Cameroon, for instance, as if we want to talk about Cameroon quickly. I'll, I'll come to Cameroon in a moment. Ah, okay, so if I look at the, at the wider picture, um, we think that our pipeline or our growth will accelerate actually over the next couple of years, especially on the African continent. We want to be in every city where our customers want to be. So there's still lots of opportunity on the African continent. There's not enough hotels here uh, to supply or to take care of all the guests that we're actually having. How many people, for example, you serve as customers in a year? A lot of people. We're currently operating over 7,000 hotels around the world. So you can just imagine all those rooms, uh, I guess it's about a million rooms or over a million rooms in total um, that people can actually stay in. So, you know, it's going to be a big, big number. You recently announced, and let's talk Cameroon, the development of three new properties in Cameroon coming up over the next five years, Hilton Garden in Douala Aqua, Double Tree by Hilton Douala and Hilton Douala. Correct. Provide further information on that. Right. So very excited that we can find new hotels in Cameroon because these are places where our customers want to be. So Douala is one of the uh, one of the cities. I think there's also an opportunity to look at Tribi, for instance. I think that's an opportunity for us. So we like to work with um, partners, existing partners and new partners. So we're looking at uh, possibilities to further grow our portfolio of hotels in Cameroon with the SNE, uh, which is the owner of the Hilton Yaoundé, where we are today. Um, but in Douala, we're looking at building hotels. The National Investment Fund. Correct. And uh, in Douala, we're working with partners who are building different brands of hotels. So uh, you all know in Cameroon, the Hilton Yaoundé has been here for 32 years. Um, is a, it's a beacon of hospitality, I would say, uh, with, uh, within the country. So in Douala, um, we're building a, um, a Doubletree, a Hilton, and a Hilton Garden Inn. So three very, very different brands. Um, I would say providing mainly for the business traveler. Uh, we see there's a lot of demand for business travel in Douala. I think it's sort of the economic capital of the, of the country. Well, we're here in Yaoundé, we're more in the government, uh, government city. Uh, like you said, Hilton Yaoundé has been existing for 32 years, receiving some of the world's best known politicians, football stars, uh, those of the music world, even Yasser Arafat, the first president, if I get it correctly, of the Palestinian Authority, have spent nights here, coffee at Ta'anan, uh, the Etos, uh, Francis Nganyu, I can give the... How proud are you of the services that Hilton Yaoundé to communities over the years? Well, I'm extremely proud of the team here, actually. So, to give you a little story, this hotel opened in the same year as I started working for Hilton. So I started working for Hilton back in 1990, same year as this hotel opened. So I've always heard stories about this property. And everybody who was here as a, as a team member or as a general manager has always spoken very highly of this hotel. And I've now been here for three days um, and I have experienced the incredible service our team members deliver here on a daily basis. I mean, the smiles of the people and the attention to detail is second to none. So I think, you know, they really make us very, very proud. And you just announced the properties that will be opened in Douala, for example. How are they going to boost the travel and tourism industry in the country? Well, having more properties allows people to actually go there. Um, we have 135 million Hilton Honors members, so that's our loyalty program. And so these travelers are always looking for new places to actually go. So once we have a hotel in Douala, we will, we will bring people there. Not only will we bring customers there, we will also provide for people to work there, right? So we are um, having new team members. We'll hire new team members, hopefully people that we have trained here mm. to go and work there as well. Uh, maybe before the interview comes to an end, some few questions. Um, what has been the corporate social responsibility of Hilton, for example, to the Cameroonian community? What do you do to the people apart from providing hotels where the executives people like you, um, to a lesser extent, people like myself can come here and stay. Do you right. provide to the communities where you, you install? Yeah, it's, uh, I think that's really the key point, why people are going to stay with us, because we want to be a reflection of the community in which we operate. So we do a lot of work. 
So typically, if you look at our ESG goals, we want to double our social impact and half our environmental impact. So we're always looking at energy saving, reducing plastics, you know, a lot of things on the environmental side because that's what our customers want. Our customers are asking for it. What are you doing to save the planet? And then on the social impact, we're doing a lot of things. So uh, are you part of the One Planet movement where uh, one moment of the year you all turn off the lights in your hotels? Yeah, the Earth, uh, the earth Hour. The yeah, earth we do. Hour. Yeah, yeah, we do. We do. Uh -huh. We definitely do. That's one of the things we do. We do many, many more things. Uh -huh. But if I look at the social impact, um, you know, I, I, I'm very passionate about this, right? So one thing, and also in this hotel, um, we take care of people that are less fortunate than we are. Uh -huh. That's very, very important for us as a company. So uh -huh. we have um, people with uh, disabilities working for us. Here. Mm. We give them a purpose in life to, mm. you know, have a, make, a, uh, make a living. One of the things the team did here during COVID, they started something which is called the Hilton Fair. Hilton Fair gives uh, local producers and, um, and, and people that make local products a way to expose and to sell their products. So there is about 510 uh, craftsmen and artifacts people that come and ex uh, expose their products here. They sell them to the Cameroonians, they sell them to the expats here in the hotel. They make a living from that, they make money of this so they can provide for their family. But the money we make of it, we make a little bit of money. We, are, we have actually used that in 12 different projects already. So we are helping uh, orphans, uh, we're helping people that are less fortunate uh, than us to actually um, uh, make, a, make a living as well. One of the things the team did here during COVID, they installed a big water tank just outside of the hotel here, actually, for people to wash their hands, right? So to show that we really care of the community in which we operate. Avant la conclusion de cette interview, or le monde uh, uh, de voyage ou bien le monde hôtelier fait face à certains défis aujourd'hui. Uh, quels sont ces défis que fait face uh, Hilton Group et comment uh, prévoir les relever? Oui, un des défis, je pense, le plus, plus grand pour nous aujourd'hui, c'est de trouver du personnel, du personnel qualifié. Donc, si on regarde le dernier rapport du WTTC, le World Travel and Tourism Council, il prévoit la création de 14 millions d'emplois dans la hôtellerie et le tourisme en général sur le continent af euh, africain. Et donc, nous, on a un rôle énorme à jouer là-dedans, à développer des jeunes pour ce métier qui est fabuleux. Donc, depuis, pour vous donner une idée, on a engagé depuis juillet 2020 67 apprentis dans cet hôtel et on essaie de les développer pour qu'ils trouvent un job ailleurs avec nous ou dans un autre hôtel. C'est très important pour nous de continuer à développer les jeunes mais aussi les femmes. Donc on, a, on fait beaucoup de travail en développant les femmes dans l'entreprise dans parce que nous on a besoin donc avec tous ces hôtels qu'on va développer. Donc imaginez-vous dans les 66 hôtels qu'on va développer ici en Afrique, j'ai besoin de 66 directeurs généraux, 66 euh, euh, gouvernantes, euh, 66 euh, réceptions. Donc j'ai besoin de beaucoup de gens. Et donc là je pense que nous on a un rôle à jouer, tous les autres hôtels aussi d'ailleurs. Euh, mais on a un rôle important à jouer, à développer des gens pour travailler dans ce métier qui est pour moi un métier fabuleux. Um, je sais qu'il y a d'autres sociétés, d'autres groupes hôteliers dans le monde entier euh, qui ont peut-être le programme de développement des talents. Est-ce que euh, Hilton Group en a un groupe pour le développement des talents en Afrique et au, au Cameroun en particulier um, Vous savez, nous, le développement, euh, nous on essaye... Moi, je suis convaincu que je veux que tout le monde arrive à faire un, une carrière chez nous, euh, développer leur talent, mais pas à 100%. J'aimerais bien développer tout le monde à 105% ou 110%. Parce qu'il faut faire rêver les gens. Donc, moi, je suis convaincu que tout le monde peut faire plus ce qu'il pense. Et donc, euh, maintenant qu'on parle des femmes, par, euh, par exemple, euh, on développe, on a chaque année, on a une conférence pour toutes les femmes des talents, on disait. Donc on vient de faire une de ces conférences au mois de juin, on l'a fait dans, dans trois destinations différentes, donc on a fait une séance au Maroc, une en Nigeria et une en Afrique du Sud. Et donc on a eu des talents de cet hôtel ici à Yaoundé qui ont voyagé à Abuja et donc ils ont suivi la conférence euh, là-bas. Donc spécialement pour les femmes, c'est une conférence qu'on fait pour les booster, pour leur donner du courage, pour leur donner des outils pour se développer. Donc pour nous, vraiment, je pense que les femmes en Afrique, on a, on a, un, on a, on a une belle réussite dans tout ce qu'on a déjà fait. Et pour les jeunes Mais on ne regarde pas toujours les jeunes. On regarde 
tous les âges. Pour moi, c'est très important. On parle souvent des jeunes. On a beaucoup de jeunes ici en, en Afrique. Euh, mais comme je disais, on a beaucoup d'apprentis aussi. Donc, on prend des gens sans éducation hôtelière. Donc, sans éducation, on les prend chez nous. On leur donne un programme pendant deux ans. Donc, ils font les différents départements. Ils apprennent le métier pour qu'ils restent après avec nous. Enfin, quel est le rapport du groupe Hilton au Cameroun en particulier et le gouvernement Vous êtes installé quand même dans un pays. Est-ce que les rapports sont bons euh, Je pense que les rapports sont très bons, euh, absolument. Euh, moi, j'ai beaucoup, euh, beaucoup euh, euh, voyagé ces derniers temps. C'est la première fois pour moi ici euh, au Cameroun. J'ai rencontré énormément de gens. Euh, il y a une gentillesse énorme ici. C'est un peuple chaleureux, je vous dis. Euh, et j'ai beaucoup, beaucoup aimé ici. Monsieur le Président, euh, vous êtes venu au Cameroun. Je suppose que vous avez quand même eu le temps d'avoir un goût de la cuisine camerounaise. Qu'est-ce que vous avez déjà mangé Oui, j'ai déjà mangé beaucoup. Ça, c'est la première chose. Euh, mais ce que j'ai particulièrement aimé, c'est le vin de palme. Je n'ai jamais eu ça de ma vie et c'était une découverte pour moi. Vous savez comment on appelle ça au Cameroun Non. Dans un langage commun pour tout le monde, le matango. Okay. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> the Chief Executive Officer of the Southern Fund for Development, Sultan Al Mushad, welcome to Globe Watch. Thank you very much. We saw you a few moments ago signing an agreement with the Cameroonian Minister of the Economy, Planning and Regional Development, Alamin Usman Me. What was the detail of this agreement? First of all, I would like to express my gratitude that. Uh, I am being here today in Yawandi, the capital city of Cameroon, to sign uh, an agreement to finance the construction and uh, the equipment of the Malbai, Malbai, Mal, Mabal Mio uh, Regional Hospital, Mabal Mayo Regional Hospital, Hospital Project, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, the SFD will uh, participate with the, uh, 12 million so US dollar. Uh, uh, this is very important uh, 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 project. Uh, the pro the uh, the uh, the 12 million dollar will be as a development soft loan. Uh, the fund will help construct and equip the hospital with uh, up to 200 bed, uh, which is a very good number as uh, hospitals. This hospitals uh, will be uh, of a world-class uh, facilities and uh, include uh, a specialized uh, medical department and uh, other uh, operational services. The hospital will be also fully furnished and uh, indicate uh, rehabilitation uh, road uh, connecting the hospital with the, uh, the main national road. Uh, by funding uh, this uh, project, the government of Cameroon can uh, reduce the harsh, uh, the hard uh, ships and ac uh, accessing the health services by providing uh, excellent health services to the uh, Cameroonian people. Uh, since 1977, the Saudi Fund for Development has been in Cameroon assisting in projects development. Um, uh, a package of nearly 30 billion CFA francs, that should be roughly 60 million dollars. What other projects are you involved in financing in Cameroon? Uh, actually, uh, the Saudi Fund for Development start uh, the development relationship with the Cameroon, as you mentioned, 1977, uh, by providing um, uh, nine uh, soft loans uh, for uh, different infrastructure projects, uh, health, uh, par uh, health roads, uh, uh, and uh, other uh, education, with amount of 110 million US dollar, not 60. Uh, one. Uh, one of the most important projects that has been financed by the Saudi Fund for Development in Cameroon, that was. Uh, the uh, Song uh, Loli uh, hydroelectric power plan, plant project. The Song Lulu uh, power, yes. power plant. Yes, which is uh, clean energy, and uh, it's, uh, it's very important for uh, aluminium industries in Cameroon and neighboring uh, countries by building a dam on the uh, Sana 
Sanaga River. River. Yes, uh, and uh, 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 with a power of 180 uh, megawatt power. Okay. Uh. Now, I, I presume that Cameroon is not the only country in Africa where sure. you are providing assistance in terms of loans, in terms of technical assistance, in terms of funding of projects that have a direct impact on the daily lives of the people. What are the key projects you have financed in Africa since your creation in, in the 1970s? Yes, uh, thank you for your question. Actually, uh, the Saudi Fund for Development is very active in the uh, African continent a uh, long time ago, more than four decades. Uh, during that time, we have uh, uh, support several uh, projects in Africa, building dams, roads, uh, hospitals, uh, 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 airports, uh, schools. So we have a variety of infrastructure projects that we have uh, built uh, to giving uh, people access to the uh, necessary services, facilities and uh, networks. Uh, to, the to, uh, to date, the Saudi Fund for Development has uh, uh, financed uh, 580 uh, projects uh, in 46 countries, African countries, with an amount uh, around 13.3 billion US dollar. So the Saudi Fund for Development is very, very active in African countries. Uh, before the interview ends about the future of the Saudi Development Fund, just tell our audience briefly, what is a Saudi Development Fund in general? How did it start? Where does it operate? Uh, the Saudi Fund for Development uh, established in 1974 uh, to uh, provide a soft loan for infrastructure projects in uh, developing countries, Africa uh, worldwide. Uh, uh, our future plan, we, are, uh, uh, we will continue our efforts to achieve objectives uh, uh, adopted by the Saudi government uh, to support international development and strengthen the kingdom's role as an active mem a member of the international community. Our uh, top priority to make a strong, positive and uh, low last uh, long uh, impact on uh, low income communities uh, we balance the economic uh, environment and the social needs to uh, of the uh, communities we operate on uh, to establish prosperity and growth for further for future uh, generations the Chief Executive Officer of the Southern Fund for Development, thank you very much indeed for being guest on our program. Thank you very much and it's my honor to be in Cameroon today signing uh, this uh, agreement, the hospital agreement, and uh, I uh, wish all the successful for the uh, Cameroon, Cam Cam Cameroon government and uh, people uh, for, uh, inshallah,